Women who dated older men as teenagers that now realize they were predators. What's your story? Story one, I'm from a third world country where it is normal for 15. 16 year old girls to date guys in their early to late 20s, especially in the 90s when chat rooms became available thanks to the internet. At 13, 14 years old with my girlfriends, we would meet up with 18, 19 year old boys, which now I know it was not a good idea, but I didn't know any better back then, until I moved to a different country where I learned that there were strict laws in place for adults dating, having close relationship with teenagers. I was too stupid to understand why my mom was so upset when at 14 I had a date and got picked up in a car by a 24-year-old who bought me ice cream at McDonald's. But luckily, he was very nice and took me home after. Can't say I wasn't pressured into doing close relationship stuff at very young age by much older men, but unfortunately, that was the norm. Story 2. My first boyfriend, I was barely 15. He was 21. Worked in a local shop and all the girls at my school liked him, so came as a bit of a surprise when the biggest dork ever, me, somehow landed him and not any of the popular girls. We dated for maybe four months. Turned out he was sleeping with three girls in my year, which I found confusing because I'd begged him to take my virginity to no avail. I always found that really weird and insulting that he never even wanted to sleep with me. Plot twist. My mom had stormed into the shop when we first started dating and told him, if you take my daughter's virginity, I will terminate you with my bare hands. God bless my mom. Story three. I met a dude on Adult Swim's forums back when I was around 12. He was 24 and was nice to me. Things always seemed hinky to me, even from the beginning, but I had no friends in real life and was definitely in an ugly duckling place. So I figured that if this is who is going to pay attention to me, so be it. He would tell me the things he wanted to do to me and eventually sent me a hideously low-res picture of his banana. And all I remember is trying to laugh it off and said I thought he sent me a picture of a sock. Eventually, he started asking that if we met in person, if he could tie me up and take of me. He started talking about buying a plane ticket to visit me and for my address, and I guess I finally had a bad enough gut feeling and didn't go through with it. My family eventually found out about us talking, and it was a huge deal. I was rightfully banned from the internet for a while. Not that it mattered much, because I wound up meeting another awful dude older than me, but this one was locally grown LOL. Story 4. He texted that he was standing outside my middle school waiting for me. I broke out in a cold sweat, and I knew I had made a massive mistake. Edit. Some comments have been asking for details. I hesitate because it is shameful, and I know in my heart it was wrong, and part of it is my not my story to tell. But maybe this can be a cautionary story for other young women? I was going down a bad path when I was 14. I looked up to a friend that lived by her own rules. She did whatever she wanted and didn't care about consequences. If I wanted to be in with her and her friends, I couldn't be a baby. I had to do grown-up things. One day my friend came to me and casually told me she had slept with a 19-year-old, and over the course of our conversation, it came out that he hadn't used a condom. I got her help. I had to lie to do it. But my friend was angry that the guy wouldn't answer her texts. I told her to give me his number, stupidly thinking I could appeal to him to apologize and do right by her. I was trying to get him to text her back and work things out. But the next thing I know, he's asking me for my picture. He wants to know if I'm really who I say I am. I should have stopped there, but I sent him the picture. Next thing I know, he starts saying how cute I am, while my friend is reading his texts back to me at the same time. The whole thing is surreal. My friend looks like she's ready to blow the whole thing over and she swears up and down she's not going to bother about the guy anymore. We let it drop. The guy keeps texting me for the next few days, trying to wheedle me, and I get this awful idea in my head. If I want to stop being treated like a baby, I have to do what my friend does, right? She doesn't care about rules or boundaries, so why should I? And I did something terrible. I flirted back at him. Things started to escalate. He would ask for pictures. He sent me graphic videos. Then he started planning for us to meet and have close relationship, always in public places. I was scared and I knew I had gone too far. I tried to blow him off. I thought he would lose interest after that, but that was the day when he texted me that he was at my school. A lot of things from those years fill me with shame, but this is the hardest to deal with because I know I didn't do right by my friend. No matter what our friendship was like, I should have told the truth and gotten her help, even if it got her in trouble. It took me a long time to realize we were both being preyed upon and I'm not sure if my friend ever saw it that way. Story five. It honestly never clicked for me until I was much older myself. I just thought I was super mature, and that's why it wasn't weird that I was 14 with a 19-year-old boyfriend. It was a super toxic relationship. He cheated on me, stole from me, lied to me, and lied about me so much. He pretty much only came around when he wanted close relationship and would tell me whatever he thought I needed to hear to keep stringing me along. In my naivety, I thought this was just how grown-up relationships were. So I stayed until I finally got fed up at 18 years old. Isn't it funny that when I was finally old enough to date him, I no longer wanted to? I thought I was cooler than the other girls in my grade because my boyfriend was a man. 
Looking back, I'm sure I was an easy lay as I didn't require much from him in return, like people his own age might have. And as I got older, I wondered if he ever felt odd having close relationship with someone who was so clearly a child. I also wondered how none of his friends, they all knew my real age, thought it was weird or called him out on it. I think that's the system they speak of when they say this kind of behavior takes a village of people who are not willing to protect the child. The irony of it all is that karma has blessed him with three daughters, and I'm sure he's had the scary thought more than once that another him will come along and treat his girls the way he treated me. Edit. To everyone saying five years isn't a big age difference. Five years didn't matter when I was 18 and he was 23, but I was 14 when started dating and when we started having close relationship. I was a freshman in high school and he was a sophomore in college. He could buy cigarettes and vote and go to nightclubs or join the army. I was riding my bicycle to friends' houses because I wasn't even old enough for a learner's permit. To the people saying they have friends who are 19 and they are 14 or the like, I can't speak on your friendships, but I can tell you he and I weren't friends. We were having a close relationship relationship, which in all 50 states falls under the criminal code for statutory assault. Thank you for the award, kind stranger. Story six. So I posted this in a thread called Redditors that have called off their wedding. Why? I called off my wedding three months before it happened. Why? I was a 17-year-old. I'd have been 18 at the time of the wedding, about to marry a 26-year-old man that had been dating me for three years. I was a victim about to marry her abuser. The engagement ring, which I did eventually find out was fake, he has money, lots of it, but that didn't matter to me, was to buy my consent slash silence slash whatever as he stuck his banana in everything that moved. He was an alcoholic, a narcissist, a pedophile. Seriously, I wasn't a 14-year-old that looked like an 18-year-old. I was a 14-year-old that looked like a 12-year-old. I loved him because I thought he was saving me from my horrid situation with my family. My mom and I moved in with her boyfriend, only to find out too late that he was an abuser. He'd take me away from it even if it was just for a little while. I was so messed up. I ended up living in a boarding house when things finally broke in my abusive household. Because, of course, I was 17 and he didn't want me to move in until I turned 18. His career depended on a squeaky clean image. I ended up pregnant, having a violent end to my pregnancy that resulted in my daughter's stillbirth. Despite this all, I loved him. But he started picking at my appearance. I was gaining too much weight, even though I was at a healthy weight for my age, height. I had gotten hips and breasts, so we talked about dieting. I stopped eating. I drank water when I'd get hungry. Everything had to be low fat, no fat, low calorie, no calorie, and sugar free. It worked. I went from healthy to underweight. What made me realize that I wanted out was a box of chicken wings. I ended up moving back in with my mother after she was able to escape her ex. We lived near an indoor flea market, farmer's market that had the most amazing food vendors. I love food, and this diet was terminating me. I was flipping miserable. So I decided to have a cheat day, and I went and ordered a box of hot wings from the chicken place in the farmer's market. As I sat down with my favorite movie, eating my favorite food, I realized that the extreme dieting would always be my life. I also realized that he wanting me to be so unhealthy wasn't right. I was tired all the time, cold all the time, hungry all the time. I decided, while happily munching on that box of wings, I was done. I called him, told him that I was done. It took me another three years to truly be done, but the very expensive wedding was done and over. He never got any deposits back. It took me almost a decade to realize that he wanted me to look like a 14-year-old forever. I was also always dismissive about the age difference, citing that I was mature for my age. I now realize it didn't matter. I was a child. Story 7. Not a woman, but when I was under 18, I think I was 16, I joined a guild on WoW, and the guild leader groomed and pressured me into sending him S and being on webcam. When his GF found out, she told the entire guild that I was a homewrecker. I really thought the guy cared about me. But he joined in and said I was desperate, and it was sad that I was so into him. He blocked me and ruined my reputation on that server. He was in the army, and I think 28. Pretty sure those pictures got passed around. And it is absolutely vile that these 30-plus grown adult men were distributing child-censored photos of me and laughing about it. I blame myself for the longest time, but telling my story to horrified faces kind of made me realize how messed up up it was. Story 8. Oh, this question was made for me, lol. I had this internet boyfriend, when dating talking to people online was still taboo, for going on two years, I believe. He lived in British Columbia and was, I believe, 31 at the time while I was in California and I think 13 when I first started taking to him. I was going through a bunch of crappy things during that time at home, dealing with constant fighting and domestic violence amongst my parents who tried getting back together, dealing with self-esteem issues and self-harm, contemplating suicide or running away. He was, of course, there for me to talk and listen and always offered a place at his home if I ever decided to run away. 
Even offered to buy any plane tickets for me if I just said the word whenever I was ready. He would always talk about the life we could have if I did run away and such. I thankfully never did run away, but the summer I was entering into high school, the stars all seemed to align for me to finally meet him. I'd always gone to summer camp with the YMCA in elementary and middle school, but high school-age kids had a two-week caravan instead. That year, it just so happened that the caravan was planning on driving from Los Angeles to Vancouver, B.C. and all the way back. I immediately told my mom I wanted to go, and we got my spot reserved. He was definitely excited about finally meeting, and the plan was to hopefully have me sneak out of the campsite and spend time back at his place before bringing me back. We also discussed close relationship, and I agreed to lose my virginity to him when we met. I was worried about him getting in trouble, but it just so happened that the age of consent at the time in Canada was 14, so he assured me he would be fine. The night came and I snuck out of my tent to meet him and I forgot the reason why, but he didn't have his car for some reason, so the choice was to take a taxi back to his place or stay at the campsite. I was worried about getting caught off sight, so I figured we could just hang out somewhere away from everyone. We found a picnic bench and I thought we could sit and talk for a bit, but he was just trying to get right to work. He was suggesting to have me lose my virginity on top of this picnic bench out in the open, and there was some random person's tent maybe 20 or so feet away. All they had to do was open their tent, and they would be facing us and see everything. He was adamant about us doing it there because there was no other option, and my dumb self gave in to the pressure. So I lost my virginity at 14 in another country outside on a picnic bench to this loser of a 32-year-old. It was pretty terrible since it hurt. It wasn't the most pleasant environment. And he lasted maybe a minute. I had instant regret, but at least no one came out of that tent or walked by while it happened. Edit. Wow, thank you for the golds, you awesome humans. My first award, too. And thank you to everyone who has left such kind and insightful comments. I really didn't expect this story to be seen, let alone touch so many of you. You guys are amazing. Edit, too. Wow, guys, thank you for the additional awards. For some reason, I found myself emotional with a leaking face. While it could be due to all the ridiculousness that 2020 has thrust upon us so far... I think it's more so this unexpected outpouring of support and maybe me coming to some hard realizations. Just know I'm genuinely touched and thank you all. Story 9. I was 16 dating my 23-year-old supervisor from work at a fast food restaurant. It started like the normal story. I thought I was mature, he made me feel special, etc., and it was fine for a few months. He seemed sensitive. He had been engaged and had his heart broken before and did seem genuinely pretty sweet. We would stay after work talking, and I'd try to sneak over to his apartment when I could. After maybe six months of dating, the owners of the restaurant found out and fired him. They didn't fire him for that, but found another excuse to get rid of him pretty quickly. After that, he couldn't find another job, and I felt responsible. I gave him a couple of hundred dollars a few times to help him make his rent, but after another few months, he had to move in with his dad. At this point, I started college. I went early, and he was living about an hour away from me. My parents didn't want me to see him when I still lived at home, so we spent a little more time together once I was at school. He still wasn't working and was pretty unhappy overall. He always talked about how much he loved me and wanted to get married, but I knew all along I didn't want to. I just felt so guilty leaving him. After we'd been dating for over a year, he moved several states away to live with his brother and try to get his life together. He got him a job and everything was going pretty well. We were doing long distance and he kept trying to convince me to transfer schools out there. After a month or two of him being gone, I finally got the courage to break up with him. He became very depressed and even to the sky. He came back to visit, and I saw him twice, both times. I had to stop him from doing something harmful to himself. I always reached out to his family or friends to make sure they knew what was going on. But eventually, I cut off all contact. I looked him up a few years ago. He's married, has two kids, and is apparently a pastor or youth pastor. Eat it. For those asking, I did report it anonymously to the church. Story 10. Well, we didn't really date. Uh, I was eight in Mexico with family. Not the fancy resort Mexico. The rundown, cobblestone street, horses are the main transportation type of town. I was looking for my sister who had gone to a corner store with a cousin. There were multiple, so I was screwed. See, she was the type to go to at least three and then at the final one, pick her items and go back home. I took off. I went to the farthest one and would just loop back. No biggie. I was walking on the street and a car pulls up from behind me. He stops and rolls down his window and asks me to come to the car. I do, and he asks where the nearest school is. I tell him it's down this street we're on and then a ride about five blocks down. Keep going straight. You'll see it. He said, thank you. I said, of course, and went to walk away, but he said, wait, and opened his door. He told me to come around because he essentially had me pinned to a small chain link fence. I got around the door as if I were to get in, and he had his pants and underwear down, length in hand. He asked if I'd ever seen one. I shook my head, not knowing what to say. He told me to hold it like he did. I was too scared to say no, so I did. He then showed me how to move my hand and let me do it. He eventually released, and he cleaned my hand off. He said I should get in. He'd give me a ride to the store. A guy on a bicycle came and started yelling at the guy in the truck. 
He was saying not to touch his sister ever again or he'd cut his hand off, and he walked me down the street and around the corner and sat with me while I broke down. He said he was sorry and didn't know what else to do. He saw it happen from up the street and rode his bike as fast he could. Eventually, I gathered my composure, gave him some money for a beer, and ran home. I think about it now. I could have been taken and never heard from or seen again. I thank that guy every day. I have never told anyone this but wanted it off my chest. Story 11. I was 14, he was 21. He knew me long before we dated, though. Since I was 12, he spent lots of time making me feel older than I was and listening to my problems and comforting me. He constantly joked about dating me or my friends, and we always laughed about how he would end up in jail one day. I thought it was a joke, at least until I became really sad and I sought out some comfort from him. He took advantage of that and it escalated really quickly. He guilted me into sending him pictures every day while we dated, and it wasn't until it was too late that I realized what was happening. I recently got back chat logs from that conversation asterisk edit conversations I had with him, and I had to stop reading it because now that I'm older, I can see every flipping tactic he used to manipulate me for all those years. It hurts. I didn't even start to think about it as grooming until I heard he dated another friend of mine. And even though I felt protective of her, it was only a year later that I thought of him as a predator and realized that we were not the only ones, and that there were even younger girls. Edit 2. Although reporting him is the right thing to do, I am not in a mental place to do so. Those of you determined for it to happen are good people and I appreciate you, but I won't be focusing on him for a long while. I'm sorry that I couldn't protect my friends or his future victims, but I will not be putting myself through that process at this time. Thank you for your support regardless. Story 12. I did this a lot as a child teenager, though all but one relationship stayed online. They were all still very close relationship in nature. I never really realized they were predators and the ones at fault due to how my mom handled me being groomed and abused by a 40-year-old man in the fifth grade. I got hardcore grounded and told not to talk to him, he got off with no punishment whatsoever, so I kept sneaking back to him. He made me feel important and special and mature. And then there were the guys I dated. A lot of guys in their 20s when I was 15 or younger. I was just a source of S and sixting for them, but it still made me feel needed. Then I started dating a 40-year-old man when I was 16. That's the one who broke the online barrier. He took my virginity. He ended up terminating himself when he was caught molesting a 10-year-old. I still couldn't bring myself to understand he was a predator. I had been hella groomed. It took a lot of therapy and medication to realize these people were the ones at fault. They were predators. I was a kid. Story 13. I was 15 and he was 28. I would skip school to go to his flat and watch him breathe candy and have close relationship. At the time, I thought he was really cool, even though he had no job and sat around doing sweets all day and he had been in prison before. There were older guys there sometimes, too. One evening called my mom, pretending to my A friend's dad and getting permission for me to go on a fake sleepover. He got back with his girlfriend, who was a couple of years older than him, and had a daughter. He didn't tell me, and I turned up there with a friend, and there were a bunch of people there drinking. I had to pretend I hadn't been sleeping with him, so she didn't beat the nonsense out of me. She went to the shops, and the older men were telling me to suck his banana before she came back. I left and never came back. He broke up with her after a while and got together with a girl three years younger than me. So I believe by this time he was 29 and she was 13. I was completely delusional about the entire thing. Now I'm 28 and I couldn't possibly imagine being attracted to a 15-year-old. He was clearly a pedophile and I was gullible enough to be groomed. I also had an experience with someone that I found out after was known for being a pido. He was about 24 when I was 15. I also slept with a man in his 30s when I was 16. After we had close relationship, he asked me to remind him what my name was. That was a crucial moment in me realizing I had to have more self-respect and this wasn't cool. I consented to these at the time, but as a minor, I wasn't old enough to consent and it really messed up my ability to trust men. My dad wasn't around much when I was a child, which was not his fault, but I guess that has always made me search for a father figure and a partner. Now I am in a long-term relationship with a guy four years older than me, who I've known for 12 years, and is a great regular guy with a steady job, and is the least likely person in the world to ever assault me. Story 14. Is it okay if I comment? I'm a man, but I had an older boyfriend as a teen and didn't realize till later on he was a predator. Edit for event. So this was around the same time a close relationship assault and assault had occurred and it put me in a vulnerable place where I leaned to someone for comfort. If this person loves me, it means I'm not dirty. I guess he figured out I was in a vulnerable spot. I was part of a few local clubs and there was this person who showed up to one of them that everyone befriended. He claimed to be 17 years old and for some reason I was too dumb to realize he didn't change his age throughout the years I knew him. Now during the time I felt vulnerable, I started talking to him more often. I was doing some work for him whenever I had time and whatnot. I somehow ignored the first red flag of his toxicity after he told me I was getting fat. He dated a female friend of ours previously, and it ended badly with details I can't really remember, but he tried guilt-tripping her with cancer-related fears. I spent the day with him one day, and I ended up walking to his house. He mentioned he moved house with his mother before because a 16 girl offered to take his V-card. 
then spread a rumor that he attempted to assault her. At the time, I thought she was a bad person, but now it seems possible he attempted something. He was complimenting and putting on my favorite movies and genres and telling me his mother wouldn't hear us. I accepted and just let him touch me. He even encouraged me to perform close relationship acts on him. I was pretty much thinking, he cares about me, so it's okay throughout the thing. After a few weeks and a disaster of a date I was seeing red, I broke off our relationship or whatever it was to him, and he got pissed, then paranoid, then guilt-trippy. He even asked something that terrified me, which was, did you find out about the camera? He claimed it was on charge, but somehow turned on and started recording me when I was taking off my clothes for him. I called it nonsense and demanded he show me that there was no footage of me anywhere. After that, I blocked him. However, he still continued to come after me. An account added me, which was posing as a Japanese student. Hentai DVDs were sent to me as final birthday presents, and I got suspicious when the Japanese student had an exchange with a cute guy. I immediately traced the photo of this student, and it came back with a decent search. I scrolled a bit to find it came from a Korean teenager's blog that had been abandoned months before. I contacted the fake account and immediately told him I knew it was him, and I knew what he was doing. He deactivated it. I sent the screenshots to my friends, and two reported that he told them he's a bit of a pedophile. And someone in his mid-twenties told me that the guy refused to date anyone his own age and had claimed he wants to date all the school children he wants. After that, he seemed to just disappear from both social media and in real life. I didn't see him or hear from him again, and no one was speaking about him or seemed to know anything else about him. I figured he might have found out we were all talking about him, and he hightailed it before we got any ideas. Didn't realize till 19 how messed up up he and other people were towards me during my teen years. He was the only one out of a few predators I actually cared for and looked to for comfort so it kind of hurt in a different way. Story 15. I know this will get buried, but I'd like to tell my story anyway. I was 18 and started dating my 34-year-old co-worker, Tom. I don't know why I even liked him, but for some reason I was drawn to him. He was charming, good-looking, always willing to help people, talented, smart. When I was first getting to know him, he acted perfect in every way. No matter how hard I tried, I could never find any flaws in him. I had a rough upbringing with an absent biological father and a mom and stepfather who treated me like garbage most days. Tom always knew how to help me forget about my poor home life and make me feel like a million bucks. He would buy me gifts, tell me how special I was, take me out to nice dinners. To a naive 18-year-old, he was just a sweet guy with good intentions. Fast forward a few months and I realized how wrong I was. Tom and I had begun to secretly date behind my parents' back because I knew they wouldn't approve. After about a month of being together, they discovered our relationship and kicked me out, forbidding me to see him. Well, lo and behold, I ended up moving into Tom's place because I had nowhere else to go. The second we lived together and he knew I didn't have a way out, that's when he started abusing me. It was never physical abuse, was always verbal and emotional. Honestly, I think I would have preferred physical abuse. It would have hurt less. The abuse ranged from belittling me and telling me I was worthless to terminating my dog in front of me simply because he felt like it. He would tell me I was useless, lazy, and stupid. Would tell me that the reason my biological dad abandoned me was because I was an incompetent piece of cow who will never amount to anything. He would tell me my family didn't love me and that I should just terminate myself because no one actually gave a cow about me anyway. Sometimes when he was in a particularly bad mood, he would take my sentimental belongings and break them in front of me and then laugh at me when I cried. I put up with this cow for two whole years and the entire two years I wished I was dead. I had no friends, no family I could fall back on. He had completely beaten me into the ground to the point where I believed everything he said. Eventually, I gathered the courage to leave, but it took a lot and took way too long. I'm 25 now and engaged to a wonderful man who treats me the way I know I deserve. I still have residual issues from Tom that I'm trying to work through. I have good days and bad days. To any young girls reading this, please remember that you are worth so much more than you think. Don't date any guy who gives you the time of day, especially if he's significantly older than you. Chances are he's an abuser who is looking for an easy victim. Stay strong and stay smart. Don't be like me. Story 16. I was 16 with a 21-year-old boyfriend. He was actually a longtime family friend who went to high school with my cousin of the same age and knew that whole part of my family. My cousin introduced me to him when I was spending the day with him, cousin. The three of us hung out all day. I have no real memory of how we stayed in contact. It was either through MySpace or we exchanged phone numbers. Either way, we started dating. And at least outwardly, my whole family approved of it. No one ever took me aside and was like, this isn't okay. No one told him to get lost. My mother was a raging alcoholic and also doing cola at the time, and I feel like I was only dating him to get easy access to my own alcohol and occasionally other sweets. It didn't seem weird to me when he wouldn't tell his family my real age. He told them I was 18. I believe that all of his friends knew. We hung out frequently with them, and none of them said anything to me either. I don't honestly know if anyone else thought this was weird for the nearly two years I was dating this man. Close to the end of our relationship, I was becoming more and more depressed and liking him less and less. 
He was becoming more and more abusive. He began putting me down a lot when no one else was around, insulting my intelligence, even though he was the one dating me. Then when I'd lash out around other people, he'd make it so he was the calm one. Eventually, one day, he got angry that I had worn a miniskirt over top my swimsuit around my very boyfriend's, and his response to this was to choke me against the arm of my couch. I didn't leave him then. It took him assaulting me while I was unconscious from my medication a month later for me to be willing to leave him. I tried to call someone I believe could help me, but they didn't answer, for other insane reasons. So I attempted to tell my cousin, this guy's friend, he'd been abusing me, and he refused to believe me. So at that point, I just kept it to myself. Very few people in my life know what happened in the end, and even now at 30, no one has gone. Yeah, it was weird when that grown man was dating you. I try to message girls I see posting on Reddit privately and tell them it's not normal, and they should find someone they trust to get help to get out of the relationship they're in. I don't know if any of them have taken my advice, but I hope so. Story 17. First one, I was 13, 14, so he was 18. I was the freshman, he was the senior. I had incredibly low self-esteem, and he made it easy to pretend I didn't. I managed to befriend the seniors and all that. Obviously, I had never been close relationship with anything. He pressured me slowly but firmly, sexting to pictures, phone close relationship, cam close relationship, then essentially everything physical but penetration, and finally convinced me close relationship with him. But once he took my virginity, he was out. Second one, I was 16. He was 22. He swooped in after the last one. I lived in a small town. I thought he was so cool. He'd bring me lunch at school. I'd hang out at the university with him. Again, with the self-esteem issues, I thought it was so hard to believe anyone would be interested in me at all, much less a college guy. Made me feel seen in a place I didn't feel heard. Third and last one, in my opinion, the worst one. He attempted to date me when I was 16 and he was 26. I said no, he wouldn't let up for a few months. He tried again at 17, he was 27, and at 19, he was 29. This was when I finally relented. And for the first time, could truly see the huge mistake I had made. He was the controlling type. I couldn't see my friends more than him. I was 19. I wanted to be out. He'd anger if I said I'd be going home to have dinner with my family. I was home from college and at my parents. Instead of eating with him. He was the type to apologize with expensive gifts often. He'd come check up on me in college, stay in my dorm. I have no idea how my roommate was okay with this. I woke up when he was getting into the throwing stuff and punching the wall phase in his anger towards me. That fight was because he wanted kids so badly, and I had made it clear I at least wanted to finish school first. My stupid peach wasn't on BC, and he was actively trying to get me pregnant. When I found out about the broken rubber band, I lost it, and he thought punching the walls near me was the answer to change my mind. I was so scared of what he'd do if I broke up with him that I took a few weeks of manipulating fights and situations, so in the end, he'd be the one breaking up with me. I was so incredibly grateful I was actually able to get out without the situation being worse. Unfortunately, these situations have me very hesitant to attempt a real relationship. And at 25, I've only been in one long-term relationship. I have a very unhealthy view on relationships. Working on it, but it's more difficult than I expected. Edit. Details in a word. Edit. Numero dues. I didn't expect to have my most upvoted comment be on a topic like this. But also my first award. So thank you. I wish there weren't this many responses on a thread like this one. It's much too common of an occurrence. I hope everyone is doing better now after experiences like these. Story 18. I was 16 and desperate for affection after being the unpopular, weird kid throughout school and being diagnosed with depression at 14. Between 14, 16, I had a few online relationships with men in their mid-20s who would send me letters to my home address from overseas and occasionally close relationship toys. I felt very mature and wanted. I was 16 when I went to an interstate meetup from an online group I was involved in. I spent the day flirting heavily with a guy who was about 24. He knew my age. I was convinced age was just a number. He came back to the house I was staying at, but took fancy to the girl who lived there with her ex. They were all a similar age. He bedded down in the lounge room with me, and I thought I might have close relationship with him. That was what I wanted at the time. But she came into the bed, and they started getting into it beside me. Then her ex came home. I'd never met him and did not find him attractive. He said, oh, cool, cuddle pile, and jumped in bed with us. I let him have close relationship with me because I was so upset that the guy I liked was pretty much ignoring me. The next morning, the ex declared we were dating and I accepted that. I also accepted when he decided that we mutually wanted to break up. I just wanted to be wanted. Another friend from the group, who was 30, the next year flew me over to his state for a dirty weekend, which I thoroughly enjoyed at the time. But looking back, I shudder and feel bad about all my past experiences. My parents were unhappy about my relationships with these older men, but I was determined that I knew better. Looking back, I wish I'd listened. And I hope my 12-year-old daughter will listen to me when I try to keep her safe, but I fear it will be as futile as when my parents tried to keep me safe. Story 19. I had actually turned 20 a few days before, so technically, not a teenager. 
but I married him when I was 22 and he was 38 despite every red flag and every person who begged me not to because I was a stupid kid and thought I knew everything. I've been trapped in an abusive marriage ever since and I'm 39 now. Thing is, I didn't realize it was abusive until about five years ago and now I'm well and truly trapped. Please, young women who date older dudes, listen to people's concerns. They care about you. They're trying to help. And if you need an ear, my inbox and life experience are open to you. I will try to help. Story 20. When I was 17, I was befriended by a guy almost 17 years older than me. We were friends for two years and he pursued me relentlessly. I never fancied him, but we did become really close and I cared a lot about him. I had a really hard time when I was younger and tried to commit suicide at 17, so when he promised me unconditional love, which I had never had, and showed me all this attention, he eventually wore me down. He made a move when I was 19 and I didn't say no. We were together for 2.5 years. I can't say he was a predator exactly. But when I reached my late 30s, the thought of being with a teenager actually made me want to vomit. A change of perspective was a real eye-opener, as I had always explained that I was more mature than he was, so the age gap didn't seem that big. But when you're 17, your opinion of time is so different to 20 years later. Story 21. Oh boy. I was 14 and he was 23 years old. We met through friends. He hung out with high schoolers, of course, and started dating. He would take me out to bars. Girls can definitely look older with makeup done, but there was a lot of people looking the other way and out to parties and back to his apartment, where we had plenty of close relationship, of course. He had some interesting proclivities, and I learned a lot of things I didn't have a clue till then that some people did in the bedroom. He made me feel desired and special, like this full-grown man could have any sophisticated adult woman he wanted, but he was interested in me. Eventually, his parents caught us having close relationship in his living room. We were idiots, and somehow it came out how old I was. Not sure how. Maybe they got suspicious, or they had seen him with young girls before, and they called my mom. He was shipped off to live with his aunt in another state, and my mom beat the nonsense out of me. I realize now he was not special himself. He was just a gross dude who liked young girls who were cowed and afraid, and wouldn't say no to the things he wanted to do. Story 22. My parents found out and threatened to have him arrested if he ever contacted me again. I was 13 years old, and he was 21 at the time. At the time, I was truly in love with him and tried to initiate contact with him after the fact. He wouldn't talk to me. I was super pissed at my parents at first. But looking back now, I am truly glad my parents got me out of that situation. Thankfully, we never went further than kissing and slight fingering, which is absolutely disgusting looking back. But I'm glad I wasn't penetrated. The guy was intellectually unstable. E.T. I just realized how messed up my childhood actually was. Story 23. I had just turned 18. He was 26. He flew across half the world to see me. I didn't want him to. Guilted me into being with him. When I told my mom I felt uncomfortable being pressured, she too guilted me about him coming so far for me. Overall, super messed up up. But the most disturbing thing is how pressed he was on getting married. This man really wanted us to tie the knot, have babies straight away. I had to remind him I hadn't even finished high school yet. That didn't bother him the slightest bit. He was dead, set on us getting married, moving to his country, and having a family ASAP. Looking back, I can see that what he really wanted was to completely isolate me from everything and everyone I know. Worth mentioning, he was somewhat racist towards my people and wasn't big on the idea of coming back to my country. And seal the deal of me being 100% dependent on him by bringing some babies into the picture. And you know what? It felt so much like everyone felt that's what I should do, that I nearly went through with it. I shudder at the thought of what could have been. Story 24. I, 20F, was 16 when my Anglican priest, 37M, first showed interest in me, even though I was attending another church and met him at a youth event he organized. He was married at the time. He singled me out and built a relationship of trust with me and my family. It started with him asking me about my close relationship activity so I could seek forgiveness. He did this with other teenagers, too. Acknowledging that we would slip up, but could be absolved if we confessed our close relationship sins. The frequent pastoral care sessions, the questions about intimacy, and the excessive online messaging was grooming me to be spiritually and emotionally dependent. He would divulge very sordid details about his marriage and parishioners' lives and told me that no one else understood him or cared for him like I did. He also had this idea that it was every woman's kink to fudge a priest and get him to sin. He said he was going to hell anyways, but couldn't live with himself for falling hopelessly in love, blaming me for it. When I was 17, he initiated oral close relationship in his home during a pastoral care session, telling me that it was consensual at my age. It turns out it is a federal crime in my country, if the person is in position of power. And he loved me. One month later, he took my virginity on Valentine's Day. Fast forward through a three-year relationship of spiritual, emotional, and close relationship abuse, and I got the strength to leave the relationship. He had the idea that I would graduate from university and throw away my life to have children for him. 
he was still married. Well, when I wanted nothing to do with him anymore, he sent his friends from within the church and even his wife after me to try and get me back, saying they had never seen a purer and stronger love than what he had. He met my parents in secret to warn my parents that he had concerns I was having unprotected close relationship with a stranger. I wasn't. And Dia met people close to me that he just lost his best friend in the world and did nothing wrong. He also posted on Facebook he was getting surgery for testicular cancer and continued to ask for prayers even after being dismissed from the church. After a month of this, I went to the police with another victim of his from the same parish, and they pressed criminal charges of close relationship exploitation and grooming of a minor and criminal harassment. The case is still ongoing, and sadly enough, he is still contractually paid by the Anglican Church, so he's battling it with a lawyer, although he is no longer working for them. But I have hope that justice will be served, and one day I can come forward publicly with my story so that other young people do not fall victim to any form of abuse by people in power. I'm finally in a loving relationship with someone my own age and going to therapy to unravel the trauma and the nightmares, although I've lost all relationship with the church because of my so-called friends' support of him this whole time. Story 25. Buckle up because this is a wild ride. When I was in the fourth grade, I was doing a musical in my school district and had the biggest crush on this guy in the tenth grade. He was nice to me. I thought he was cute, nothing crazy. Fast forward seven years, I'm 17 and a senior in high school, and he was 23. We crossed paths on the town bus, and it all went downhill from there. We became FB friends, and it very quickly went from catching up to suddenly we're dating, and he wants to spend his life with me. You'd think that would have been a retina flag, but wait, there's more. He was also a pathological liar and told me he was dying of pancreatic cancer, and used this excuse to tell me we should have close relationship. Luckily, we never did. He also claimed that his car got vandalized. He was homeless. He got kicked out of school. He was in the military. He was this and that. He also had a daughter, and often when he spoke of her, he'd call her ours, which was weird since I'd never even met her. He always tried to get money out of me and us. He used to plan out our life together and talk about kids and all this. But he would also disappear for periods of time, and I wouldn't hear from him, only for his excuse to be that either he was in jail, in the hospital, or a couple times he would post on FB about threatening to terminate himself. One of the times he disappeared for a while, I was on a school field trip, and he called me on the bus ride back home, telling me all about how he was in the hospital and thinking about me all the time. And I was the reason he was still living and asked me to marry him. My dumbass was so touched. Then about a month later, he told me he had to go to Montana for an experimental cancer research thing. Never heard from him again. But a few weeks later, saw him walking down the street. Anyway, the good part of the story comes after that. I found out that while we were together, he had blocked me on FB and had an actual girlfriend the whole time. Oh, and I also found out that currently he's in jail for being a pedophile. Anyone surprised? Story 26. Oh, cow. Here's my time to shine a light on how messed up up predators are. Backstory, I'm from a town of 400. I like books, never took gun safety or snowmobile classes, was super sick as a kid and couldn't be in sports, and didn't get along with my classmates. So when Facebook first started, lots of groups were out there, older men, younger women, blah, blah. So me, finding men like Pierce Brosnan and George Clooney more attractive than Channing Tatum, turned to these groups. I had men messaging me all over the place, a high school shop teacher, a retired truck driver, a media personality, a principal, and so on. And I was a horny kid, read Harlequin romances since I was 12, like I was desperate to feel the passion that happened in between the lines of these books. So there I was, 16, and had men fawning over me. I'd talk dirty with them, and we'd share pictures and talk about they'd come and we'd make love. All that BS. For four years, I dated the retired truck driver. He lived hours away, so we never met until I was a freshman in college. I mean, the man was gross, married, and had me combed into being wrapped around his fat cane-scented finger. We hold ourselves up in a cow hotel when I should have been partying and going to classes and learning what a hangover was, not rolling around in bed trying to get a 68-year-old hard because he had low testosterone. Four years he had me so convinced he was my only love I'd ever have, and that when I graduated I'd drive to his home, turning my back on everyone and everything I'd ever known. And when I would want to hang out with friends, he'd say I was a worker, and I was flipping all the guys. I wasn't, was literally hanging out with friends. So a few months before graduation, I came to my senses and realized how messed up up it was. I did hook up with a guy who was my age, and I ended up dating for a few years, but had savior complex because he knew my original plans. But anyway, retired trucker gets the email because he didn't know how to text and only had Facebook that I'm done, and how messed up up it was that he was doing that. He wrote me begging me to come back, and how I was just mad he wouldn't be at graduation. I told him no again and said that would be it. That bad person mailed letters typed out on an old peach computer about how I should enjoy my last night on my knees and how I was going to bleed when he got a hold of me. I was so scared I couldn't tell anyone, not even save your complex. So I went to the police station and told the cop my story. 
He said an international restraining order is hard to get, but he'd call the guy and try to scare him off. Won't lie, I was a little heartbroken when I heard how sad he was, but CM on guy was almost 70 and I wasn't 20. He never contacted me again, and I actually found his obit a few months ago. I have way more stories of small stuff with him and other guys, if you want, just ask.